In this video, we're going to be looking at the Music B Preferences. If we go down to Edit, Edit Preferences, it brings up a window where we can see all the options and preferences for Music B. Some of these we looked at in previous videos, but in this video, I want to go through all the tabs and show you all the options we have. So under General, we have options for the applications, such as our language, whether we want to check for updates at startup, whether we want to show the splash screen at setup, and always show tray icon. We can also select the icon. Notice that if we click change icon, we can choose an icon. And when we hit apply, notice that we have the icon here on the top left. So we can change this however we want. We have the smiley and so forth. I'll choose the gold. We can choose what happens when we single click or double click the tray icon. In this case, a single click will show track information. A double click will open the main window. You have options to change this to open the mini player, play pause, and set volume. You can choose what happens when we minimize, minimize the taskbar, notification tray, or mini player, or compact player. We can associate file types with Music B. You probably need you will need to open as administrator to set these file types. Under confirmations, we have all the confirmation windows that we can check. So warn when duplicated tracks are being added to a playlist. Warn when duplicate when duplicates are added to playing tracks list. So that's here. Warn when files are not organized due to missing tags. And you can go through all of this and check which ones you want to enable or disable. We looked at layout and layout two in previous videos. Just to summarize, we can change the background image of Music B. We can change the default fonts. We can change the header bar menu. For example, I like to have the, for example, I like to have a standard menu layout like this, but you could change it to just show a button or show the menu under the title bar. You can change how the tab bars look. and change the font on that as well. You can add custom toolbar buttons if you like. You can name it and set what command it does. You can customize the left side panel. That's this stuff over here, whether you want to show podcasts or videos or audiobooks. I'll uncheck that. I don't need this, so I'll uncheck that. Hit apply, and we no longer have that listed in our left sidebar. Under layout two, we can choose how the mini player looks as well as how the taskbar player looks. Under hotkeys, we can configure all the shortcut hotkeys. As you can see, there are many, many keys that you can modify here in Music B. You can search and modify these keys however you see fit. Under player, we have audio player options the output for the audio, the sound device. We can choose to play some silence at startup, increase buffer size if the track is stuttering a lot, up mix to stereo 5.1, resample. We can choose what happens at startup, whether we want to do nothing, resume playback, or resume position. We can choose video player. By default, we're going to use the default media player that we have. In my case, I have pop player, so if we play a video file, it will open up in that. Or we could choose a different video player if we choose. We have MIDI plugin for playing MIDI tracks. And we have sound effects. Crossfade, smooth fade, dynamic normalization of volume. Add silence to the end of each track. And we can customize the number of seconds. Remove silence at the start and end of a track. As well as a shortcut for equalizer and DSP settings, which we looked at in a previous video. Under now playing, we can customize the playing track list, which is this here. We can set 
the action to take when adding tracks using double click, whether playback is stopped, we'll say play now, or cue to the next or last track. Play now action, we have shuffle settings, and playback options. We can choose to switch to a, a different mode when, playing, when playback starts, playback follow cursor, highlight playing track, and the playing tracks panel. I'll select that. We can choose what to show when shown in taskbar. In this case, name, artist and name. Under library, which we looked at before, we can choose to auto-organize files, export the library as an iTunes format XML file. We can choose, on startup, we can check for updated or missing files. We can choose our scan folders for music. And we can have it set to scan on startup or continuously monitor these folders. We can choose to include video files or exclude them. We can choose our folders here and we can go ahead and select from anywhere on our system or network. Podcasts, how we want to name the podcast, we can reorder them. This is similar to how when we organize files. The frequency of checking for updates on our podcast. New episode actions, whether we want to download the recent or don't download or download all new episodes. We will look at podcasts and future videos and playlist options. Where are my playlist folders? Where do we export? In what format do we want to export these playlists? We can choose to use relative paths or use the Linux path conversion. We looked at tags in the previous video. But here we can customize all of our tags, our custom tags, our artwork, and lyric storage. Under tag 2, we have how we can auto tag and the format and the locations to check for artwork, tags, and lyrics. So for example, for artwork, we're looking at fan art, iTunes Store, Deezer, and Bing. It will check those sites for artwork. Here we can also configure our fields. We can customize all of these fields, like in the last video for tagging, we changed the title to name, and that was done using this here, under the fields layout editor. We also chose to highlight songs, notice these songs labeled green here, and that was done using the defined rules for highlighting. So we said, we looked for all genres that are of smooth. We looked for all songs that are of genre smooth jazz and labeled them green. Under sorting and grouping options, we can choose how we want to sort and what order. We can choose to ignore the the in some songs when we filter by alphabetical order. And grouping. How songs are grouped. Files for each album are organized in their own folder following fields defined in an album. Under internet, we can choose proxy settings where downloads are stored and our web custom links. Under CD ripping, we can choose the format to encode as. We can choose the quality, where to store the ripped files, what do we want to add to the library or inbox, the naming convention, and we can also choose how to handle the pre -gap. We can choose to automatically start ripping a CD when CD is inserted, automatically retrieve album artwork from the internet, and analyze the volume. We can choose our CD drive, red offset, we can look that up. We can also validate our ripped CDs and choose the rip speed. In this case, I have maximum. We can choose a quick rip or secure rip with error recovery and check for C2 errors. Under tools, we have where we can open external applications. I don't really use this. I just wanted to show you that it is an option if you want to use. We looked at file converters in previous video. Again, we can choose to enable these codecs and choose the options by modifying the options for each, for each codec. 
and we can choose the thread priority in encoding threads. Under devices, we would see a list of all our sync devices. We'll be looking at syncing with Android in the upcoming video. But the, your devices will be listed here. Under plugins, we have plugins for Last FM and CD Art Display in theater mode. We can uninstall, enable, or disable these plugins, and we can, of course, add plugins. And so that's a quick look at Music B preferences.